If you're thinking about purchasing a condo downtown Portland, Oregon, then you're going to want to listen to this video until the very end because we are going to share a handful of things that you're going to want to know just up front ahead of time. And at the very end, Spencer's going to share just a couple um, quick examples of price points because there is a very, very wide, I feel like there's this um, misconception that in order to purchase a condo downtown Portland, it's going to be like a million dollars no matter what. Right. And I, I sold a condo downtown Portland not too long ago and it was like $250,000. Now mm -hmm. it was a not a good area, not it's the best high area. Rise luxury building. It wasn't a high rise. No, it was very, it was, um, I think built in like seventies, hadn't been touched 400 square feet, but still my point is there's a very wide range of what you can buy as far as condos go. There's old, there's new, there's updated, not updated, really, really big square footage and small square footage. And of course, all different price ranges on different side of towns. So yeah, I'm glad you said that yes. though, because like when I think of condo living, especially yeah. in more of the Portland market, the Portland yeah. area, I think more luxury, high rise, big building looking over the Willamette River and, yeah. you know, even a doorbellman at the bottom yeah. of the steps, just helping me in and out of my car, more luxurious living. Yeah. And, um, th you know, there's a wide variety, but ultimately it always comes down to inventory and what is available. Yeah. We will show you and tell you what is available and how many units are available right now in Portland. And that number was very surprising for me to see. Um, but... Mm. I just wanted to let you guys know, like these condos, they don't have to be a million bucks. They don't have to be yeah. 500,000 bucks. Yeah. They can start at like $250,000 and it looks like online, the highest one is about $945,000. So right. difference in variety, um, but you're kind of getting the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Ultimately, you're going to get that two bed, two bath, two bed, one bath, and even a three bed, two bath type situation. Okay, so before we go through these fun facts about condos in Portland that you want to know and before Spencer shows us a little bit of what um, price point wise um, we're looking at here. Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Mariah. And I'm Spencer. And we are a top producing husband and wife real estate team here in Oregon. And we get calls, texts, and emails from people like you who are watching our YouTube videos all the time. We work with a ton of um, relocation clients and we love it. So basically people like you watching our videos who are thinking about relocating to Oregon from all over. So if that's you, feel free to reach out. I'll put our contact information below. We'd love to set up a time to chat with you and well, see what the next steps are to moving to, moving you to Oregon. And today's right. show, it is geared more towards buyers. So I did want to give a yeah. little update as to where we're at and what my clients have been stating and seeing as we are searching for homes. Okay. Um, yeah. they're, they're not all that, uh, how should I say, aggravated. Uh, they are liking the interest rates right now. They did a slight decrease over the last week and a half, two weeks, which has been terrific and phenomenal. Mortgage applicants are up percentage-wise, and we are seeing a little bit more inventory as the spring market's hitting, which is super good for my clients because that gives more of a variety for them to choose from. So if that is you and you are thinking to make a move here soon, it could be a really good time right before summer that we can still be able to negotiate for you as things might transition into a little bit more as a seller's market is my little prediction mm -hmm. um, because already I'm seeing it on some listings that there's multiple offers and there's over ask price offers happening. So if you are looking to buy a piece of property here in the upcoming future within the next, I would say, 12 months, right now would be a decent time to start looking and I recommend you do so. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So first off, um, generally, um, the first fact that you're going to want to know, um, is generally a condo is going to cost less than a townhouse. However, the HOA fees do tend to be higher with a condo. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you know what that is ahead of time. That's something your agent will be able to find out for you what the HOA fees are for, you know, different condo properties that you're interested in. Um, but that's super important to it's, know. To go along with like an HOA fee and yeah. an HOA fee is simply a fee you pay monthly that's towards something, right? You're not yeah. just throwing money and never seeing it again. Yeah. Realistically, you're throwing it into an HOA third-party account that's being paid for landscaping, exterior maintenance, deferred maintenance is a big one that your HOA fee is for. Um, and then in the future, there's usually a thing called assessments, and that's when 
big things are needing to be done. Like say you have a 20 unit complex and all the roofing needs to be done. Well, that's a really big chunk of coin. So in the HOA, you might have these assessments is what they're called. And that is somebody to provide a bid. And then once the bid happens, they assess the, I guess, homeowners, you as the new owner, but there's 22 of you. So you're one of 22 that owe this amount for this project to take place if that fund is not in the HOA account, meaning you guys just simply don't have enough funds to do the upkeep on the unit you currently live in. Mm -hmm. So that is something I do see a lot of people get hicked up by. And they definitely want, you definitely want to be checking when you're in the middle of purchasing a condo unit is the state of your HOA. And if there's any upcoming assessments and through the escrow process, we have like eight or 10 business days that we are supposed to be receiving all of the HOA documentation. That means meeting minutes when and talking to the president, receiving um, bank statements, showing the account of how much funds are in the HOA. So there really is more work to be done after an offer sent with a condo. Um, because of the state of the HOA. I would consider that to be one of the most important parts in buying these units and for you to fully understand what your responsibilities are, but then again, what the HOA's responsibilities are. That's really good. Thank you for mentioning that. That's definitely something that a lot of um, first-time condo buyers aren't always aware of. Um, the next facts that you're going to want to know this is more geared toward I guess condo sellers but if you're going to be listing your condo or if you're going to be trying to find an accurate price for it it's really important to um look at con look at look at units um as far as comps go mm -hmm. only in the same building right. you're not going to want to look at comps down the street it's not like finding comps for a you know a regular residential home or even often like a town home where you could use a condo that is around the corner from you you really want to stick with that same specific building because um generally if you see from what we see, uh, um, of course, there's always exceptions, but what we see most of the time is if a condo unit is selling for a certain price in one building there, it's going to be pretty similar across the board. We're mm -hmm. not seeing like super drastic changes in prices. Of course. I mean, it differs of obviously if you're, you know, on the top floor of a high rise, like yeah, there's gonna differences, be, some yes, minor differences. But, yes. But it, it's pretty minor for the most part, especially compared to, um, residential homes um okay so pricing wise though i would say they they're easier like a listing agent us yes, to come in and, and get a condo listed because definitely. realistically your condo can only sell for what an appraiser can appraise for right yeah. so we have to take into account previous sales because that is what the next step in the transaction is going to be once we have an accepted offer is the appraisal appraiser coming through and assessing what the property value is yeah. now it always helps to have a ready willing and able buyer submitting an offer because i hear sellers say this all the time i don't need your cma i don't need to know what my property is worth i just had an appraisal performed i refinanced maybe three months ago well, there are differences in appraisals because there really was not a ready, willing, and able buyer during your refinance appraisal. So usually these uh, sales, your appraisal value is by far a lot higher than if you were to just refinance. Mm. Something to know. Yeah, that is something good to know. From a downtown Portland condo, you are going to have shops, restaurants, really good restaurants, I'm going to add, um, in a lot of cases, offices, along with Portland's mass transit system, all within steps from you. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing about just like being right there. There's a lot of walkability yeah. and um, great biking as well. We have a, I mean, Oregon is known for being one of the best biker um States, I'm pretty sure like Portland specifically is known for being one of the best oh, biker yeah. friendly cities. Yeah. Um, and nearly half of all condos on the market right now in Portland are in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So we, we can find you, Spencer, I'll have you pull up um, just a couple examples of like what you know, different yeah. condos cost, but we, we can find you condos. I mean, we have clients today's show is about downtown specifically, but we have clients who um, sometimes they want to buy on a town that's on the outskirts of Portland that's still a quick 15 minute drive into downtown and but they're not quite you know they're not downtown but they're very quick easy drive there's a lot of different towns surrounding on the outskirts if you're not from the area if you're not familiar where you can find 
great condos as well, but you're going to be obviously you're going to be looking for something different. So can I touch a little bit on the transportation for, yeah. for our viewers, our audience, yeah. you guys, you might be out of state viewing this video yeah. and wondering what it's like. Um, do you necessarily even need a car? Now, the one thing that's really unique about Portland that like even Salem doesn't have, um, Eugene doesn't have it. Corvallis doesn't have it is the railroad system. Yeah. Um, there's a Metro rail railroad for citizens, you guys, and you just pay a yeah. yearly subscription and it's basically the same as taking a city bus. But this rail system gets you from all sides of Portland because Portland is a very big, um, town. It's a very big city, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And there's different districts and areas and mm -hmm. the, your workplace yeah. might be completely different than your living place. But the really nice part is the Metro rail system that yeah. you guys as citizens get to use. And it is cheaper than driving. It is cheaper cheap, than yeah. Ubering. Yeah. And it goes, I would say, a distance away from your property that you could be living in. Yeah. And that is a big way of transportation that a lot of Portlanders use. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. All right. Let's pull these um, yeah. examples up. Just a couple. There are quite a few condos out there and available for you guys specifically in the Portland area and like we mentioned earlier I mean these things vary you can go from $150,000 all the way up to I believe I see is the highest one is like 6.57 million dollars now those are the buildings we're talking about those are the buildings we see on TV million dollar yeah. listings and they're like 5,000 square feet almost. Yeah. So, so it's a big condo. <laughs> so a little bit different category, price yeah. bracket and yeah. tax bracket. Yeah. But now let's go to this lowest one. It's $150,000. It's two bed, one bath, 796 square feet. Let's give you guys an idea of what an HOA fee at a place like this and just vi visually imagine an apartment complex, a two story apartment complex. That is basically the looks mm -hmm. of this condo unit. And remember, this is $150,000. So we're all searching for homes right now. What can get you um, a property for $150,000? And this is financeable mm -hmm. conventionally. The, HO the HOA fee is $676 per month. And it was built in 1974. Now, with that being that year build, you're going to definitely want to take a look at the state of the HOA and make sure everything is good. So you're not at risk for any special or future assessments. And that's going to cost you money out of pocket. Like I said, these are fixes and repairs that have to be done to the units um, over time because of deterioration and age. And that just comes with the cost of an HOA. Now let's go back and just scroll down the middle of the list. Let's just find a really fun one for for you guys. There's a couple pages just because there's 350 yeah, condos. Yeah, there's a lot in Portland specifically. I want to see. Okay. <laughs> Here's a really cool building that that I really love. And it's downtown Portland um, off of the Willamette River area. I should say. And it's all walkable. That's mm -hmm. the beauty th beautiful yeah. thing. This is a great area. And you get a coffee shop on the bottom, usually mm -hmm. a restaurant, dining area. So you're really getting that city life feel. Now, price-wise, looks really good. $265,000. That's $265,000. But here's the caveat. It's only a one bed, one bath, 736 square foot home. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand the location and what your life looks like versus other people's, maybe this works for you. And it's going to yeah. be more like a flat. Your that's build. that's kind of what this home looks like on the inside. It's open. The year build is rather new, 2020, or not, excuse me, it's 2001. Mm -hmm. But what caught me off guard is it's fully updated. Mm -hmm. And the furniture on it looks terrific. It's yeah. fully staged, it looks like. Yeah, they staged it well. And it's got good natural lighting, which is something you always want to look for. Where does the sun set? Where does the sun rise? Make sure you have good natural light in these condos. Yeah. But that's a one bed, one bath condo for $265,000. But remember, it's walkable and the location is terrific. Now, let's go with one more and then Mariah's going to jump onto here. Now, keep in mind, I'm scrolling down these pages. I want to find you guys a really fun one really fun one so let's go right here 
Now, this is literally on the Willamette River. This is where if you have a boat, if you're sailing, if you just enjoy kayaking, this could be an amazing home for you. And personally, I've been to the restaurant right below it on this boardwalk. Not a boardwalk, but it's a sidewalk that feels like a boardwalk, oh, if yeah. I should if I should clarify that. Um, this is $322,000. Very odd number. But also, keep in mind, it's only one bed, one bath. So realize that, yes, there's availability for condos, but usually the sacrifice is going to be space versus location. That is something that most people... If you're into condo living in that lifestyle, you're going to want the best location possible because you understand the price you're paying for location. You're not too worried about space because you can make it more turnkey. Maybe you're never home. You can Airbnb or it's just you. And I mean, that's all you need. So 322,000, one bed, one bath, but it is 905 square feet, which is similar to a two bed, one bath house. Um, in the year build, let's get you guys that information real quick. 1991, mm. you know, so that's, but it's, once again, it's fully updated and you do have um, uh, Willamette uh, River views. So river, mm-hmm. it's a river view with, with yeah, a, um, view. a nice, a nice uh, green park. What is it? Riverfront park. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Green Park. (laughs) I know. That sounds so lame. Oh, my gosh. But, I mean, come on. You're right on the riverfront is what I'm trying to say. And Portland is known for having a a really nice riverfront, especially within season. Yeah. Um, But just be aware of the geese. They have quite a bit of geese down there. (laughs) Okay. So, this one is um, located in my favorite area, one of my favorite areas, I guess, um, in Portland downtown. It is in the Pearl District. So, it's a very, um, you're going to be in a, a nice, desirable side of town. It was built in 2007. The building was, um, the price we're looking at here is 449. I'm I'm sorry, just shy of $950,000. Let's just just say, let's just say nine. Yeah. $950,000. Um, and it's a, the building, it's just different. It has kind of this like mid century modern feel to it, but it's, it's newer. It was, it's not like an older remodeled type building. You're going to have floor to ceiling windows here, two bed, two bath, 2,100 square feet. And the HOA is 1800 a month and it's a little steep, but I, you know, it's the area that you're in. It, yeah, it's a little steep for HOA, but, um, the area that you're in is, I mean, a really, really great, um, really great area. Really nice. It's one of those locations where, I mean, you're going to love, but once again, it's going to fit your lifestyle and your workplace. Yeah. Okay. So that is all we had for today. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We come on here every week and make new videos. We just talk all about Oregon real estate in Oregon, and what you want to know if you're thinking about moving to our area. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next week.